This video, we're going to be breaking down TJ versus Henry Madden 24 Ultimate Madden Bowl. This is the semifinals and uh, trying out a little uh, web paint tool. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we're tr trying to draw some stuff on the screen for you guys so you guys can kind of see some of the some of the actual like breakdowns and setups and explanation. But uh, anyways, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. So we've got Henry versus TJ. T TJ, by, by and large part, pretty much the rookie of the year, $145,000 earned. I'm pretty sure all of that is this year, $920,000 for Henry, which is absolutely insane. Nobody's even close to that. I mean, not even, I don't know what the, I don't know what the next closest earner is. I want to say it's probably like maybe four or $500,000. Um, that's insane. It's just insane. And the crazy part is Henry has made that money from Madden 20 to Madden 24. So within the last four years, he's made almost a million dollars. And if he wins this game, it's going to put him in a position to potentially make a million dollars in the final. Okay. So Henry is just, I mean, it's just, it's, he's just an incredible player and he's always some, whenever you're trying to get better at anything, you want to look at what the best players are doing. You want to ask why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, and then you also want to understand, you know, maybe what that applies to you, uh, how that applies to your game. Maybe there's something little that you can take. You can literally learn from anybody. You can learn what to do. You can learn what not to do. So this is uh, a fun matchup. Now, Henry's going to start out the game here with a little inside zone uh, run, and you see kind of a couple things. So why would he do that? Number one, just trying to get on a hash. It's easier to – just not easier, but it's, it's just more consistent to pass on hash marks because the zones will play – more like what you see uh, when you're actually labbing and preparing your your offensive plays. So second and six situation. And uh, now one of the things that's important is we've got my man TJ. He's coming out in this like kind of spread, kind of spread D line uh, dollar. So what you'll see oftentimes is you will actually see um, kind of like a spread, a spread D line, which typically indicates that he's trying to send these. Uh, he's trying to do this. He's trying to send corner here, corner here, this guy, this guy, and this guy off the edges. And then this guy is kind of like the X factor. If he blitzes, then these guys come free a lot more. If he covers out, then typically this is only maybe a one, uh, a one, a one size uh, pressure. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. Now Henry's going to go with this route combination uh, right here. So he's going to go with a a drag to the tight end a post route and then this guy's going to motion out and he's going to come back side on a drag and then this is a clear out this is kind of this year's version of the play pa read now you might ask why is he calling the play pa read primarily because these guys are going to all have a different blocking system which is going to allow him to basically this guy will block here this guy will block here here and then what you'll see is we'll be able to kind of basically neutralize uh, the blitzing threat that TJ is posing. All right, so those kind of the idea, and you're going to see this is kind of the basics for the the whole game. Uh, what you will notice with comp play and and really typically, I mean, just generally, okay, is you can get a real big time feel for what they're doing, really within the first couple of plays. So again, let's just take a look here. As you can see, this is just a quick post snap anal analyst or analysis, but you get blitz, 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 blitz. So what does that leave from a coverage per, per or a coverage option? Well, we get a man coverage uh, press press man here. We get uh, the user having to midpoint and basically, am I going to take tight end or or this guy? We got a little half here. I'm pretty sure this guy's in the middle third, and I'm pretty sure this guy's in an outside third. So that's kind of the coverage that you're seeing uh, with this. So now, let this run a little bit. You see the pressure's coming in. Henry's able to make a really nice quick read, and he's able to, uh, as you see, the user kind of bites here. So you don't want to throw the ball here. You want to lead the ball kind of in this area of the field, and that's going to allow. Actually, it does look like we end up getting uh, cover two here. This guy was definitely manned up here. So we get a little cover two on the right. So what that does is this is wide open in the middle of the field because these guys are both fanning out to the sideline and it opens the middle of the field for them, uh, for Henry to be able to attack. So as you see, nice blue pass, nice possession catch, and um, and we're off to uh, a good start. Okay, so this play, 
this next route combo I didn't want to touch on. So basically, here's what you're going to get. Uh, let's see if I can... Uh, I didn't want it to run. Back it up real quick. Okay, so here's kind of what we're seeing. So basically, Henry Henry's understanding the, the concept that TJ is trying to run is TJ is going to blitz quite a bit. Um, he's going to send this quite a bit and probably even this quite a bit. Okay? So... Henry's mentality is I gotta, I've got to block the blitz, right? So right here, you're going to see block a tight end. But then the other thing you're going to see is we're going to get a lot of these little, like, just one-on-one -on -one simple combos. We're going to get a little drag running back. So if they play, like, let's say this guy's in an outside third, then this guy becomes wide open when he comes underneath. And then on the back side here, we have a streak and a corner. So what has TJ been doing? We've seen a lot of cover, too or basically cover zero. So if he runs cover two, then this fade will pull this half inside just a smidge, which allows this big hole shot over here to the right, okay? So that's kind of what Henry is looking for. Uh, it's kind of what he's looking for on this play. Let you see. And I think he, does he block, or no, he crosses a tight end actually, and he's gonna block the running back. So he changed up the combo, as you can see. Um, the beauty of this blitz is that it just screams through the A gap. It's really good. It's not. It's not exactly the dollar A gap. It's the spinner A gap, and the spinner A gap is really the best because you can combine it with the slot corner pressures. So you basically it's a very similar combo. It takes his flat read to the right, and then uh, third down and one. All right, so third down and one situation. We'll take a look at this real quick. So this is one of those like, I think he goes back to that wheel route here. Let's see what he does. Yep. So there's the wheel. Yep. You got that corner. See, he's looking for that. But but what does TJ do? Good move by TJ. He ends up going to cover three there instead of cover two as a shell. And then he still uh, sends pretty much the same pressure that he was sending beforehand. All right, fourth down and one, kind of a got to have it play. And Henry's going to do a really interesting combo, and I'm going to explain why it's really good. Okay, so this is the combo that he's going to go with. Let's see if I can get the actual play art on the field here. All right, so this is what he's looking for, okay? So essentially, again, what are we getting a lot of? We're getting a lot of either A, a cover two, or we're getting a lot of outside third, outside third, right? Outside third, outside third. And then what are we, we're, we're pretty much guaranteed we're going to get this. So who has to guard this guy? Well, if this guy blitzes, the only guy that can guard this guy would be this guy right here, right? Well, or the user, of course. So what he does is this corner route is designed to take the third out of the play. This crossers don't sleep on this again this is all out of pa read why because that's the play that he thinks can block the blitz the best so this crosser as he comes across if this guy on the left's an outside third right about in this window this crosser will pull this guy if this guy's manned up if he's actually just truly manned up then that means he's going to go here to the post which is going to then leave nobody to guard that so those are kind of some of the thought processes. And so from a read progression, uh, what are we looking at first here? Well, we're probably looking here first, and then we're probably looking here to here. So that's kind of the read progression as well. And we'll see. Okay, so if right here, what do we get? Well, we get kind of what I was saying. So if you look here to the right side, it's kind of crazy. I'm not exactly sure what this guy's doing. Um, he ends up blocking the tight end. But basically, nobody's guarding the slot corner. So at this point right here, TJ has to choose. This guy's crossing, right? He knows that this guy is going to pull back, probably, and guard the crosser. So TJ is going to attempt to cut up and take the post. And honestly, if we watch this frame by frame... It looks like he it looks like he basically manned this guy up. This was wide open, but uh, his user's just a step behind. He just can't get there. So TJ or uh, Henry's gonna end up 
throwing that. And he's going to end up scoring. So pretty decent first drive. Uh, TJ Jeff definitely trying to gas him up, send a lot of pressure out of Spinner. If you guys did not know, Spinner is the clear-cut best blitzing defense. The only challenge with Spinner is the coverage is really not that great. Okay, so uh, at this point in the, in the Madden year, we have uh, Hot Route Master. So you see here, making all these adjustments and hot routes. And then he's going to go to this route combo. Look at this deep post. Looking for that deep post there to the right. Now, this is what Henry was talking about when he talks about playing TJ. He said TJ's reads are really, really fast. Really fast reads. Uh, right here, I actually love this route combination from TJ. You'll see. Uh, let me back it up so you can actually see this. And I'm going to talk about Henry's defense, too, while we're looking at this, just to give you a basic framework uh, for how to look at this. Okay, so Henry is in a different defense. This is not what we've seen from Henry pretty much all year long. And the defense is 3-3-5 odds. So basically the concept here is he's this guy right here is normally standing about right here. So he's going to move him in so that he can get him to basically blitz right through the A-gap. So you've got these five. This is where the pressure is going to come from for the most part of the game. Now, from a coverage perspective, when you send five, what can you do from a coverage perspective? Well, typically, you have a couple different options, but what we see most of the time is this guy in a flat, this guy in a half, this guy in a third, this guy in a flat, this guy in a quarter, okay? So what that allows the user to be able to do is he can work this entire kind of middle section uh, of the field, all right? So this route combination, where is this designed to attack? Please notice the ball on the right hash mark. That is really important. And then if you take a look here, you've got Sanders as this clear out streak. Now, what this is uh, designed to do is attack really the deep section of the field. Now, if this guy is in a quarter or a third, he does not guard these short corners. So look at the point at which this short corner is going to come open. It's going to come open about 20 yards to the sideline. And then you have this little drag that can come open here, but really it's designed to attack this space over here. So we have high, uh, we have a, a clear out or a peak read, a high read, a low read here to the right. And then basically the other two routes are designed to mess with the user here. So assuming Henry's user is designed to cover the middle of the field, he's going to have to choose right at this point, am I going to guard this space here? Or am I going to guard really this space here? Those are kind of the decisions, and those are kind of the routes that we're looking at here. So you see right here, that's basically what happens. You get a hard flat, you get a third. Now what he does, kind of interesting adjustments here, honestly. But basically you get a hard flat here, and, and Henry is probably honestly anticipating this combo because this is pretty popular. But what you get is this guy, he's, he's taking the flat away right now right? This guy's rolling into a third, this guy's in a third, and then we get a Mabel. So we get a, a hard flat to take away that point, and we get a, a deeper flat to try to take away the corner route. Then what he does is he mans up, he locks this, but locks the tight end up in man coverage. Well, that short corner will kill man coverage. So the route to throw, right at this point right here, we're looking here, and we're really just reading the user. If the user continues with the tight end, then we're going to come back and we're going to work this, both of these routes will be open. If the user goes back here, which he probably will, the tight end is going to be wide open. So that's kind of what you're seeing in terms of the routes. Uh, and Henry actually only sent uh, four that time. There you see, tight end's open. Get a nice blue pass on the sideline. Almost got out there for six. And a really, really good play call by TJ. So as we just kind of start, uh, as we just kind of start thinking about, okay, what are some of the major, uh, I guess, themes of the game as we're starting to just watch through this? Really, you're going to get a roll coverage from Henry, and he's going to try to play basically cover three with a cover two on the on the short side, or uh, he's going to play cover two on one side, cover three on the other side, and then he's probably going to be either sending five. If he sends four, he's going to cross man somebody. Here you see Flood. I like the fact that Henry usered it. I was wanting to look at this play again. I don't love this right here. So he does this at a post wheel drag. So, okay, this is really just an underrated thing. So the combo here is streak, corner, 
flat. So where again is where again are we attacking? We're attacking deep. We're attacking in that kind of middle flat area. And then we're attacking here at the underneath flat area. Now, what's really cool about this play, and this is post will drag, you have this tight end drag. So where's he attacking? Well, you're really, if you think about where you can throw this, he's going to attack here, and he can kind of attack in this little pocket here. Okay? The problem with this play call, in my opinion, is the post will drag post route, and, and TJ Bush might know something I don't, but the post will drag post goes super, uh, it kind of sharply cuts, or uh, I'm sorry, mesh spot, the mesh spot post kind of sharply cuts like more, more at like a vertical. But if you run the slot apprentice, it's more horizontal. The reason why the slot apprentice post is better, in my opinion, is because a middle third cannot delay the read. And you can, you can hit this pocket really right here if this user bails out. That's the idea. So, um, so we'll see how this looks. So you see, see, see how, see, see this right here? So again, as the play develops, you know, he's going like this is open, but tries to throw that. It's not there. And we get a, um, and we get a second or whatever, or whatever the down is. All right. So here we get double corner. Love this play, uh, but I don't love how he was this. This was not corner strike. Okay. So he goes to double corner, but he's going to do it differently. And I actually don't love this. Um, it's okay. But basically, we've got a deep corner here, a streak. And then this guy is supposed to be on the short corner. Because of where he's at, because he's here and not here, he's going to run the short corner, but it's going to get up into a little closer to this guy. And Henry really hasn't shown any reason, uh, any 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 like sign that he's going to man up be out of this formation. So I don't really love that play call. And look what it does. It puts him on a fourth down. And Henry has, basically Henry has a stop. So TJ is going to end up settling for three here. And we're going to get back into Henry on offense. So I love the red passes. We'll talk a little bit about this, but David T talked about it. Basically, if you get a blue pass, typically if you get a blue pass in this game, you're going to get pretty much perfect accuracy. Uh, again, it's just interesting to me. Like I said, you can learn so much in the first drive. In the first drive, you can kind of see like how they're going to play you and how you need to play them. There's not much like they have a, hey, have a game plan in that first drive. And that's pretty much what you're going to see. So, all right, let's take a look at this play here. So this is uh, trip side in. Okay, so this is the play that we want to uh, just pause here. So uh, one of the weaknesses of spinner is the audible audible round. And basically, uh, that's one of the biggest weaknesses of it, is that when you audible, it's hard for spinner to to basically play audible, audible round schemes because you can just get misalignments. But I want you to look here. So right here, so this is spinner. Pretty, I mean, it's kind of spinner. It's like baseline spinner. Then he does this. Now, what TJ does is he backs this guy off. Um, now, the purpose of the back off there is if he were to put him in a deep zone, he would. the guy would actually like basically be able to get back on a fade. But if he puts him in any, any kind of cloud, whether it's a hard flat, a soft squat, any of that, to take this flat... What Henry's going to do with this route combo is you're going to see you've got this guy basically over the top. So now we're going to isolate this safety. And essentially the read here, if the safety goes back to cover that space, look who's going to be wide open right in here. It's hard for this guy to get back, honestly. Um, the user here is going to have to make a decision between the drag and the post. The purpose of the wheel is, I'm not exactly 100% sure, probably just to clear out zones for this or to give a hot read if he blitzes. Um, those are kind of some of my thoughts. But anyway, well, let's take a look at this play, and we're really just looking for like the immediate quick snap here. So I just want you to see the coverage. All right, right here. Okay, so uh, here's what we're going to get. We're going to get basically cover two. Now, this is DB fire two. Base, uh, I think he checks to it, honestly. But you get this, okay? So this guy here is here. And this half, 
He, look how look how um, he's got to cover a significant amount of space, which is the problem. So yes, we take away this, but Henry does a really good job of this fade right here. And we're really, what are we looking for? We're looking to hit that whole shot on the cover two defender. Now the user, um, if you think about it, this is not terrible user, but Hen Hen or, uh, TJ's basic plan is to let these underneath zones take this drag and then Hen or TJ is going to roll back and he's going to play that, which is fine. But again, we put this guy in way too much conflict and what you're going to see here, as you see, I mean, pretty much. And if he waits on the running back, he's got it. Obviously, he's getting screamed at. But as you see, touchdown for Hen Dog. And um, now we're now we're cooking, as you can see. Now this game, now this game is really at risk of getting away from TJ, uh, which is which is really the the thing we got to look for here. So now you're gonna see uh, TJ go back to probably go back to bunch strong um, a lot more. All right. So again, this guy's going to blitz here. Boom. There it is. Look at the pressure. Look at the pressure. Really, really good heat. So now we're in a third down situation. This 3-5 through five odd, the whole idea of running this defense, honestly, is just it gives people – it really throws people off because people just aren't used to playing this, used to playing dollar, right? So Cloud takes the tight end, got the post. Um, almost got a fumble there. So really, honestly, up until about this position of the field, TJ's done a really good job. You, you got to feel like, I mean, really, he's been fine. Um, but it's really this section of the field that hasn't really worked well. Things have just been cloudy. The reads have been cloudy. The routes, the route combos have been cloudy. Um, and so it makes these route, it makes these reads really hard. That's, that's part of what I'm trying to see. So second and 10 go, I think that was, I'm not even sure what that route combo was. That was like a weird one. That was like a, that was like a mesh spot. Not quite sure. So there should be post post drag here. No, it's going to be flood. So here's the motion out. So he goes to that short post. So you see streak corner boom boom throws that i i just mm, this is just a mistake man look at this let's back this up go about right here okay from this right here perspective what are our what's our read progression on this play this is important to read so we've got a clear out streak okay so our peak we're peaking this streak generally if i was reading this play i'm just looking to see can I, is there somebody back there? Now, at this point, we see Henry's defense is this guy's in a flat. This is, and if you watch my game against Young Kiv, this was one of the mistakes I made a lot. This guy's in a purple. This guy is in a third. So he's got to get from here back here. But you also have an inside outside. This guy's, to, I think this guy's in a half. Or uh, an inside third. So you see here, now we run the play a little bit more. And you see, he is now on top of this. He's almost even with him. So that's that's part of the issue. So this this route is now dead. Now I need to look to the corner. Can I throw that? I might be able to throw this. We are on the proper hash for this. So I might be able to throw that. I, this guy, he's dead too. So now this really comes down to, can I throw the corner? Now his user, look where his user's at. Again, third down and seven situation. We have we know we have this short post coming, and you, as you can see here, there this 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 post is pretty much dead at this point as well. So you really only have two options: you're either going to throw the corner or you're going to throw the drag. So if you wait on this, you see the drags manned up, pretty good defense. So maybe what I'm maybe what TJ ends up doing is saying this play is just bad, and I'm going to try to take a shot. I could see that his user is rolling back well uh, to take that away. If we run this out though, look at this. This guy is coming open over the top of that defender. So um, kind of an interesting call. But that puts him in a third down and seven. And now he's in a fourth down. And now this is like you have to go for this. You cannot kick three here. It was almost an interception. Uh, just was – and, I, I mean, I that's just – you got to understand in this year's game, it's hard to beat a cover three right up the seam 
when you have all these KOs out of a tight slots. All right. So fourth and seven. So obviously Henry, Henry's probably thinking, you know, if I get a stop, I basically won the game. So right here we get, um, I would assume this is post will drag. Uh, yeah, it's post will drag. This, this is crazy. There's not much. So we get a cover two here. That's going to take away the tight end. He's dead. Okay, we get the little back on that, and Henry's taking that away user-wise. So the only option here is this, and you've got to put this post in a window where this guy actually cannot get to the ball. You see right here. I mean, this is this is not um, an automatic read. I mean, this is mm, it's a good animation. Had you get a bad animation there, that might be a KO. Um, if you throw it, if you if you throw it too sha uh, too shallow, it could be an interception. Ends up throwing it perfect, makes a good play in a big moment. And that's what TJ's pretty much done all year too. If you look at his game, he's basically just he makes the he makes big play, he makes big moment plays. He really does. This is his red zone combo. Don't love it, but I, I mean I see what he's trying to do, but I don't love the the uh basically the and i i did a video on this months ago the best way to score in the red zone obviously is to run the ball but if you have to pass the ball you want to have a hitch and you want to have a post over the top of that and that post needs to be smart routed so we get a little uh flat little little wheel route how does he score here tight slots let's see what he does here take the look at the combo hopefully maybe no Throw that. Oh, what a wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at this. Five were sent. Nothing is, I mean, nothing's open. This is open here. No one ever throws this, by the way. And I think this, for my game, this needs to be a read. So in your progression, as you look at this, you would be looking probably here to here you end up staring at this route from here all the way here most of the time. So as I'm looking at this, I'm going, maybe I need to look here, you know. Um, this is crazy. This is crazy. He gets out of here. I mean, it's a good scramble. It's a good scramble, but that's a scary scramble. Um, he ends up pounding it in with uh, from here. There's no need to really – I don't feel there is any need to talk about the, you know, the fact that we ran stretch for the – millionth time but Henry gets the ball back so two minute drive situation now if you watch this game as you're watching this game you're kind of getting a feel for what's going on you're probably thinking to yourself as I am that Henry's in complete control of the game and so and he is and he probably thinks that as well and I don't think Henry realized he got ball at half um, I'm pretty sure I don't I he might have maybe that was yesterday maybe that was yeah I think it was yesterday he knows he gets ball at or TJ actually gets ball at half here so uh, t the fact that TJ gets ball at half, uh, it does change kind of how you want to play. Because ideally you get this to a two-possession game. Ideally you get this to a two-possession game. Nothing there. Throw it away. TJ is actually not playing bad defense. It's not terrible. It's not. It's not terrible at all. This this little defense right here it is giving – this is basically the Lambo. I feel like when I watch Lambo play, he does a lot of what this – he does a lot of this stuff. It's basically spinner. We're going to adjust out of spinner, and we're going to send a lot of pressure. We're going to send a lot of pressure. And uh, we're going to basically say we're going to send five or six almost every play. Um, and and that's I, – I do think that that can give some of the best players in the world trouble because – they, you have to make quicker decisions, right? And oftentimes that's hard to do consistently. So this time Henry goes to trips and he's going to go to a little uh, RPO. At this point, this is the main thing that matters to Henry. He just wants to make sure that TJ does not get the ball back before halftime. Now, what's interesting about this situation is how much – how important is it that Henry scores a touchdown? And it's really up to the game flow and what we've kind of been seeing throughout this game where Henry's Henry's kind of playing TJ pretty well. I mean, the way TJ got seven, 
wasn't like it wasn't like it was just easy, right? It really wasn't. It was a hard drive, and um, he ended up getting seven. So what you're gonna see from Henry here is he's gonna he's not gonna try to not score, but he's not gonna he's not gonna uh, kill himself to score. Love this combo. Ends up throwing it away. He had the running back. Well, that's fine. All right, so let's look at this. So I actually like that combo again. Goes to P.A. Reed here. He really likes P.A. Reed for how, for I guess, for the blitz. I guess that's the main reason for it. Like I said, I, I don't see any other purpose to call this play ever. That's open. Now you get in a situation here. So he's got three timeouts. Smart by Henry. Again, manages the clock well uh, throughout uh, this entire game, really. And first and goal, ball on the four-yard line. And basically he's probably thinking... I think at this point he's just trying to score, honestly. But he's trying to make sure he doesn't put himself in too risky of a situation. That's why you see him run here. And then we get a timeout. You're going to get basically probably three runs and a field goal. Uh, he might pass. If he does, it's kind of interesting. He's going to go to a red zone dot. No, he's going to go to power row again. This is a shotgun wing, wing flex close or something. I don't know. Almost gets in there. Now we're down to three seconds, and he just kind of basically ran out of time. He probably would have liked to maybe get one more play, but, you know, isn't able to do that, and we go to half. So uh, TJ gets ball out of halftime. I think. Let me see if I – yeah, here we go. Uh, TJ gets ball out of halftime. So why does Henry content with taking three? Why well, I, I truly think deep down Henry just didn't feel like TJ could score touchdowns on him consistently. Uh, he probably felt like TJ could, could, could uh, score field goals, uh, but field goals ultimately are going to get you beat if you're playing somebody like Henry. So you see here, just solid fundamental defense, just you know able to stop the run well. Three three five odd, probably a little better run D than Dollar is. You do get a little nicer alignment. Um, the only thing is the, I mean yeah, he ends up getting a first down. TJ right here, his main objective is really just a, a score. He can take as much time as he wants. He, If he gets seven on this drive, um, it does make it a it – just, it, just, it just makes the game a lot tighter. It really does. And I'm getting screamed at again. And this is what I wanted to say about these combos. You're playing 3-3-5 three, three, odd. The whole purpose of this defense is this guy right here. That's the whole purpose. I would call a little quicker developing plays. Um, I feel like I see this a lot in these MCS games. Some of the route combos, they take so long to develop. They really do. This like Something like that. That was a good combo. That was a good combo. Third and 10. And you see, I would say just in general, just watching TJ's body language, watching him in the other MCS games we saw him play, he just doesn't look very comfortable at all with his system. He does not really, it's like he doesn't really know what to call and when to call it. That's almost an interception. So now we're on a fourth down and 10 situation. So fourth down and 10 situation here. Backing off this slot corner. I didn't even notice that. Just noticed that. I'm sure he's been doing that a lot. Moving some people around. Backed off cur curl flat. And Henry gets the stop. Okay, so right here. TJ sends five out. Now, this is what I want to talk about. Look at the combos. One, one thousand, two, and I mean it takes you it, it's we're at three seconds before there's you can throw anything. There's just nothing you can't with this blitz. I mean, he got screamed at. He sent five out, he got screamed at, and here we are. And if you're taking notes defensively, like obviously you see the found the foundation of every good defense in Madden has always been a pressure. It's always been a pressure. It doesn't mean you send it every play, but it means you have the capability to send it in key situations. As you see right here, I mean, he just gets absolutely screamed at. He's 8 for 20. He's 8 for 20. I mean, just just uh, really not good. Not not good. And I just, you, you, look, you look at this and you're like, makes sense why Henry settled for three there at the end of the half. I mean, there's just nothing, there's nothing TJ's doing that's making Henry really sweat. The only thing, and I would say this, I do think uh, TJ's defense is not bad. 
Um, I, I feel like that's the better part. The offense is just really not looking good. Um, it's just, it's just, it, it's the stuff's taking too long to get open. He looks very indecisive in it. He's not running his main stuff either. He's not running double corner. He's not running Durham. It's like what I what I see oftentimes in these big moments, these big games, and I look at, back at my film and I go, I'm guilty of that too. You don't call like your best stuff. You you start calling just like random, not random, but like just stuff that's not the best possible uh, solution. So here we get a little slant post, nice little catch up the field, and he's in for six, and it's going to be a 14-point lead. So TJ has to score here, <laughs> um, and it has to be seven. So this is this is a stay alive drive. So it's a gotta have it drive. He loves this play out of post will drag. This has been pretty good. It's probably been his best play. The the wide side post, the short side or the wide side corner with the short side post, post will drag. Really good play. Um, and I, I said I, I just watching him play. That's the play he's most comfortable in. That's the play in every key situation he goes to. As you see, he goes to now he's going to flood. And I just ah, I just lock I watched this game back and I'm like we we did not call much out of Bunch Strong. We really didn't. He did not call much out of Bunch Strong offset. Now, finally, again, the, now we're in a got to have it drive. Look what he does. Well, guess what we're running now? Now we're running Durham, our main plays. Like, it's just interesting to me to watch this game. If you watch the first half, the entire first half, we're calling some of the most random stuff. And, and, and I'm sure he had a reason for it, and I'm sure he labbed for it. I'm not doubting his preparation. I'm just saying... <laughs> sometimes you can overthink your combos. You really can. Sometimes you can overthink your combos in big moments and big games. You just kind of play uncharacteristic and I, it's hard to put your finger on why, but I mean, I just, I, I just don't understand some of these plays. Like we're, we're fourth and three. We got to get a first down here. We're getting, <laughs> and he does. <laughs> this is the story of TJ season. Look at this play. Look at this. Look at this. We have a flat, a wheel. I mean, it's not a, it's a good quick dot. I think, I don't know what this is. I think this is a tight end post. Is this a hitch? I don't even know what that is on the right. No, it's a, it's a um, streak. A post, a flat, a wheel, and a drag. He gets absolutely screamed at here. I mean, I <laughs> if Henry just uses this drag, it's it's GG's. And I think he tries to. <laughs> I mean, this is the biggest guest read I've ever seen. That <laughs> oh man, that's not a good way to live. <laughs> that's not a good way to live. I mean, you see, I mean, it's just over and over again. And Henry, you see Henry here. He's like, ah, I should have used her the drag. Yeah. It's all right. But, I mean, you see Henry. I mean, he's like, he is bagged. I mean, he's, Henry's probably thinking to himself, you know, like, I mean, he just probably really feels like he can bag him. And he, he really is. Is that a flat zone on Randy Moss? I might have to. If that If that's a thing. Might have to put a flat zone on on uh, Randy Moss. All right, put your fours up. Going to the fourth. Again, got to have it down. Second and ten. What's he going to? It's the same thing. But now it's short side, which is another interesting thing to me. I would never call that play short side, but I guess that's why. It's honestly not a good route. Com like, you never call this short side. You never – I just – I'm just – very rarely do I see this called short side. Uh, so it's the same play we've seen pretty much from TJ whenever he needs a needs a play. It's this. This is a good play. This is a really good play. But the problem is this this does nothing. This is a this might as well be a flat route. Like a a curl flat bags this. So I mean I guess it's fine. But now look. So so really the there's only two reads. Like at this point there's only two reads. This is dead. This is dead. This this whole right side is completely dead. So basically the read here is I'm going to have this in this pocket or I'm going to have this probably about here. Okay? That's the main like that's the main decision that TJ is going to make here. So you see the user right here. Now, what Henry's trying to do is he's trying to go take this. Not able to get there and I mean, this might be 
flat, flat. I, yeah, I mean, it's open. It is open. It's just shocking to me. If he, if the middle third comes from the left side, uh, it's probably it's probably taken away. But anyway, you know, there it is. Touchdown. Could have been a KO, as you see on the side there. It definitely could have been a KO. It wasn't. So Henry does, or uh, TJ does what he needs to do. He goes down and gets seven. So now he needs to stop. Obviously, Henry, he's going to start out. And you see how systematic Henry is. That's one thing that I really liked when I watched him play. Like, you know, we're always running the ball. We're always getting to a hash mark. We're always uh, playing, you know, certain defenses in certain situations. Like, it's very much so, like, methodical. It's more methodical than, I think, meets the eye. That often, His offense, I would say, and Henry's known, known, like, known for this, his defense is very systematic. I would say on offense, he's he he's not as systematic, and that could have been really bad. Henry kind of falls, I think, victim to this too. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not much. You could have probably thrown the running back, but a lot of people don't throw the running back early on the angle route, to be honest. It's a really good read to make, though. It's almost like a slant. It's a better version of a slant. Uh, table route. Crosser, good read, good read. The most systematic I saw Henry on offense is really Madden twenty two. When he was a man, but in, in in Madden twenty three, Madden twenty four, I feel like he's more of a freestyle offensive player. Like he just kind of, I don't know. It's like he's a. It's like it's almost like he's trying to predict what you, what you're doing defensively, and then like call, just like random stuff, like a little flat route to a solo receiver, or something like that. He just does some interesting things offensively. Not bad. I mean, obviously, look at the results. But I think his. I think he would also say his defense is his best. That's where he's at his best is defensively. Great run call there. And you see now, uh, I did want to go over just a little game management that Henry just did. So when he got to the 39-yard line, which um, actually really the 40. So once he crossed midfield, so right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay, so he makes this read. Now look at the ball. The ball is going to be about right here. This is this is masterful by Henry. Because of the situation and because of how hard it is for TJ to move, this is the key at this point. So you'll see run play. Because now what are we trying to do? We're trying to get this thing we're trying to get the clock go gone, and we're really willing to settle for three because it gives us a two-possession lead. So you'll see here again, second and four. Um, I think this is another run call. Yep, he goes to kind of odd. And when Henry wants to run the ball, he'll start doing these audibles. He just auto. Um, there was a game, there was a famous game I broke down. It was him versus spamming buttons in the Madden 21 Madden Bowl. And you saw Henry do that, where he would basically do some fake route routes, audible around, kind of like some really just window dressing. And then he'd run the ball. So first and 10, two seconds, boom, run the ball. He's going to snap this at one every single time. In Henry's mind, I'm just trying to take my three because he trusts his defense that much, especially in this game so far. You know, there's some games where maybe you don't, but the way this game has gone – TJ's every single play is a struggle for TJ offensively, literally every single play. And there's really only been one play that's worked for TJ offensively consistently. And it's that post wheel drag play. Like what other play has actually worked? If you really look at it, and that's why these film studies are so important because it can give you insights like that. Like at the end of the day, the main thing that he like, not that you would call post wheel drag every play, but it, it, it was his best play. So, you know, hey, maybe he should have called that a little bit more. Maybe he should have had more. Maybe he should have had, you know, just more uh, familiarity, comfortability with the scheme. And then Henry gets out here. Now, this is a really interesting decision. So I think TJ ran commit. Pretty sure he runs commits. So he run commits. Henry gets a great cut out here and he gets out here. Okay. Watch what he does right here. He's going to take the first down again, situation. And then he's just going to go down and. That's going to be it, pretty much. He's going to kneel out the, the the game, essentially. And then he's going to give TJ the ball back with, you know, a couple seconds. So he's basically just going to run this clock out. 
as you as you watch the semifinal game back and as you think about kind of just some of the things you saw in this, hopefully what you saw was the masterful game management from Henry. Obviously, his offense executed. He scored consistently against a defense. I would say this is probably the toughest defense. I'm not sure if it's the toughest defense he's faced all year, but it's definitely uh, something that gives a lot of people problems. That spinner defense, what well, it's a very tough defense to consistently beat because it's a pressure-heavy defense. So I would say TJ was actually stronger offensively or uh, defensively than he was offensively. His offense was just for lack of a better word, just slow, indecisive, and he knows that. I, I think I saw him put out a, a tweet uh, about it, a post about it. But uh, anyway, so, so you see here, again, got to have it. What are we running? We're running a uh, post-wheel drive, a variation of it, but yeah. So anyways, uh, he ends up basically second and ten. I mean, there's not much more here. Uh, really interesting that Henry decided to go three three five odd to me. Um, I will be, I don't think he'll run that against Wesley. I really don't. TJ loves these little wheel routes with the corner routes. Um, it's one of his favorite combos, but, um, all in all, Henry just closes again, closes another one, makes another final. I mean, he's the best Madden player of all time for a reason. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the breakdown guys. We're going to be doing some more in-depth variations of these breakdowns in our, Patreon, you can sign up for that by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.